essence of Dublin sound system, the, the experience of Dublin sound system is a uh, is a sharing of the so sharing of music. It kind of emulates like a, a kind of drumming circle or more ancient vibes of sharing music. So Reggae dub is everything, you know? Like, seriously, it's so, such a big influence. Reggae music is a music that always speaks about the truth. Sound system is equipment to deliver the message and to deliver the music to the people. Well, reggae music is within all of us, you know, it's because you know, the riff pattern is like the beat of our heart. So JT from Kibbe Alam Luck Sound System, selector and operator of the sound system, and I do all the production in the studio as well. The essence of dub and sound system, the, the experience of dub and sound system is a, is a sharing of music, it's a sharing of music in a different concept, really, to, to a live band or to a club setting in, in many ways. It kind of emulates like a, a kind of drumming circle or more ancient vibes of sharing music. Um, Kabir Amlak was first, first played as Kabir Amlak, I think, in 2008. Um, but prior to being Kabir Amlak, we were Teshuba Hi-Fi. And prior to that, Stamina and I were in the next sound called Honda Jericho. And that started around 2004, 2005. But then really for me, I've been playing sound system as a youth since the 90s, just walking the streets with two blocks on wheels and um, playing in little community centres and house parties really my entire life in a way. Uh, okay, greetings, I'm Strider, uh, one half of the duo Dub Chasm and also uh, promoter of the events Teachers in Dub and host of the Sufferer's Choice radio show. Yeah. I think what draws different things draw different people to, to Roots Dances and um, in this day and age I think a lot of it is all about the bass and uh, a lot of people are, you know, you, you hear uh, talk about bass music even these days, the bass weight and so on um, and that is a huge part of sound system, you really feel it in your chest and, and, uh, and stuff but there's so much more to it and I think some people who initially might come from a bass line, um, they actually, when they go a bit deeper, um, by go, you know, by keep repeatedly going to sessions, they start to listen to the word sound and feel the power in the message as well as just the powerful bass line, and um, and also feel the atmosphere and the energy that's created in a roots reggae sound system event, uh, which is something quite unique and special and. Eventually, I hope that's what we achieved with teaching this stuff. What drew me to reggae originally was um, it was through radio, uh, pirate radio. Um, I was, you know, when you're, you're young and you're trying to, you're listening to music, but you're not quite sure what what your is your thing. And um, I'm talking like I don't know, 10, 11 years old or something. And um, and then I stumbled across pirate radio shows on um, the stations um, just from scrolling through the dial. And um, it was this music, and immediately I thought, yeah. My name is Aretha Marija, 
I'm a roots and culture artist and I live in London. I became aware of Rastafari when I was around 17 years old. At 17, I would go around to Martin, Susan and Mark and we'd reason about the Bible and we'd, we'd wonder what was actually happening. And one of the books that we read mainly was Revelations. Revelations. A revelation speaks of Selassie I coming and he, in, within that coming there's going to be a greatness so I decided to study more um, and what I learned of people such as Howell, such as Martin Oplano, such as Emmanuel and these people were based in Jamaica and Kingston. Um, I also had Rasta friends, I started to move amongst Rasta people and learned that Rastafari started within the heart of Jamaica, Seven Mile, where people would reason about this coming of this black king called Emperor Haile Selassie and that he would redeem us through his coming. Well me, like most people, I was a late 60s child, so I grew up on Bob Marley's music, Peter Tosh, Bunny Whaler, Bernie Spear, you know, and everybody knows of them, and their music was basically infectious in our homes. Um, for me, Bob Marley and Peter and Bunny were the men who really brought Rastafari's message to the forefront. Well, what I would like to mention is that I feel that over the years I've, I've noticed that Empress Menon hasn't been incorporated within this way that Selassie came, was crowned and brought along his wife to be crowned with him. So that gave me an, an awareness as well as an, as an African woman also who, whose redemption is within the land. I know that Empress Menon has a key part to play and reggae music is now my tool to bring her name forth within the music just as Bob D and Peter. Yes, blessings. My name is Alpha Roots, my charter for Tudor Lion Sound, cover up in Wandsworth. And um, yeah, man, making lots of dub and keeping the things moving forward. Reggae music is within all of us, you know, it's because the, the riff pattern is like the beat of our heart, you understand? So basically, it sets apart it's by itself because it brings everyone together in a way where other music doesn't, and you can, you can bring generally a lot of different topics into reggae, but it sort of stands, it's, it's, it gives its own message of like, of uh, peace, unity, righteousness, justice, equality, you know, more than most music, you know, obviously hip hop and jazz, but reggae was the real sort of, very quite revolutionary. Hi, my name's Chris Farrell. I run the Idle Hands record store here in Bristol and the West Country. Um, we stock a lot of dance music and we also make a point of selling roots, kind of new, new and old kind of stuff, and it's a dance or rock study. Reggae Club is everything, you know? Like, seriously, it's a, such a big influence on my life. And, um, you know, I grew up in uh, Worcester in the Midlands. And as a teenager, you know, my dad put me on to albums by like Keith Hudson and uh, Augustus Pablo and it kind of really shook me out of listening to you know at the time everyone's listening to like Blur and Oasis and stuff like that and you know listening to uh, This Is Augustus Pablo or Pick It Up you know it actually changed my life you know like um, being able to appreciate music not just for songs but the, the, the feeling that you know the sound you get in, in reggae um, and, and since since then, you know, ever since I was a teenager, I've always like I picked up sevens as I'm going along, picking up LPs. And the main thing is I'm a mainly a kind of house and techno DJ, but I can never you can never under, understate the importance of reggae, especially in, in British culture. I mean, 
without like the wind rush and that, I don't think. But, you know, we wouldn't have a record shop there today. We wouldn't have, you know, well, so so many things, you know. Yeah. And it's yeah, it's been a big big influence in my life. Well, first Legends. Um, my name is Stamina Ali. I am um, the founder of Star Culture, Star Culture Music Distribution, and Star Culture Record Star. Um, yeah, well, what else? The, the, the record that we sell at Star Culture um, are mainly roots, mainly reggae, and obviously they have that message of, of positivity and and reality. So uh, anyway, yeah, it's for the people to keep in touch with what is what is real, you know, the reality, and uh, and yeah, the positivity because that's what the the, the world needs really, and. Uh, Record, vinyl record, so the, the, the original thing. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> there's different um, opinions of what is a spiritual experience and stuff. But I think myself and many friends in the scene have been really uplifted at Sound System Affairs and reached a real high. Um, you know, and some people are in there for, and they're getting an upliftment because they think, oh, this tune is really rare. You know, this would sell for a fortune on eBay. This is one in the world. And then you get another person to the next to them, next to them, who's actually listening to the message, and they're getting on a high just about the message. So people again are there for different reasons. Yeah. But I feel that you, if you actually, if you actually absorb the message in the music, you'll reach a much higher heights than, um, than those yeah. who don't actually check the website. There is a greater responsibility on the actual sound systems and entertainers themselves to do the job of, uh, of schooling and teaching the new and crowd. Because as a promoter, it's uh, your role to get people, to get bodies in the dance, to make the session work financially and uh, so more can continue. But it's the sound systems and the, and the mic men's uh, role to actually steer that session in the right way and um, rather playing up to a new crowd who might be used to a just bass driven culture um, and just waiting for screams for rewinds, actually taking that bit of extra time to talk between the records and, um, and explain what is actually happening and how, how much of a culture is attached to the music and that this isn't about escapism, it's actually about roots and reality. It's, it's, it's vibes, isn't it? It's, just, it's basically like if you've had a long stressful week and you know you need you need to cleanse cleanse yourself of all the you know all the hype of daily life and it you can go there with your bedroom and have untold fun just through the medium of word sound and power, you know what I mean? It really give you an uplifting feel, you know? For the vibes. Pure vibes. And what is the vibe? Vibe is love. love. I think at the heart of sound system and uh, the essence, especially when you're talking about in the UK, when sound system was um, first sort of being born in the UK, it was um, and, uh, a means by which for black people to preserve some sense of the culture. African that was culture stripped from them when they were taken as slaves from Africa. And in that is, is what really was the driving force was to, to have something to try and preserve some of those cultural values. But as that progressed, that struggle to, to, to preserve 
those cultural values, which is the values, is that when you're talking about African values, you're talking about creation values. If Africa and Ethiopia is the cradle of humanity, then those values and that culture is the, the values at the heart of creation. So that struggle and preservation of those values really resonated out because it's at the core of all beings is that value. If we're all created originally in Africa is at the core of all of us have that original liberty. So that sound system and, and with all um, black music really that was you know, or a lot of the, you know, the conscious black music but that black music from that time was at the core of maintaining that those values and then so it just translated out now and it's spread far far and wide obviously like Bob Marley took reggae music to all four corners of the world it's quite a, a mission to run a sound system I don't personally do it, you know, it's, um, I've been involved in sound systems, but I've got the utmost respect for people who do um, undertake such a mission, because it is a hard work, um, and there's a lot of factors that go into making uh, uh, a competent, entertaining sound system. One of the, you know, a lot of people concentrate, a lot of sound system owners concentrate so much on sat on their actual equipment, which is important, but I feel sometimes in concentrating so much on equipment, they forget the key ingredient, which is delivery and selection. Because the sound system is equipment to deliver the message and to deliver the music to the people. And so, you know, it's, it's actually, actually crucial when, uh, when the sound operator actually knows how to select how to piece together music and how to present and deliver it in a very constructive, helpful way. We go to sound system to to experience culture. So it's not just the going out to have a few drinks and you know to go and hear some loud music and you know party and dance and get drunk. It's not that. It's you go there, you know. You hear new tunes, you know, it's like you go there to hear the music, you know what I'm saying? So if it's a Rastafari sound system or it's a Rastafari um, session that's running or it's a, you know, it's, it's the, the, the sound system is ran by Rastafari brethren or history, then that principles of that liberty is, 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 is um, communicated through that. And, 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 and the, that discipline of that, for example, not you know being excessively drunk or excessively on, on drugs and things like this, um, come, it's, it's, it's not really a, an environment where man is coming to look woman or woman is coming to look man. Um, it's, 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 it, so in that way, it's more of a an environment that is, is, is for giving praises or for taking time for oneself to really appreciate love the the fullness of the music so the, the Rastafari thing the, the Rastafari essence in sound system helps with that discipline to, to keep that spiritual atmosphere in the dance but Rastafari and sound system are not the same thing. They're, they're two different entities. You know, Rastafari is Rastafari, and sound system is not um, necessarily part of Rastafari liberty, and neither is, is is necessarily every sound system a Rasta sound system. Rastafari music is. is is drum music, sound system is sound system, but that message of Rastafari still comes out through the sound system. It's a, it's a, it's a good vehicle for the message. Um, it's, it's a way to transmit the message far and wide. Okay, 
Blessings to Empress Menin and His Majesty. Um, my name is Empress Jessens. I give thanks for you for inviting me here. My roots. My roots. I can't forget my roots. My African roots. My Ethiopian roots. My roots keep me strong. My roots keep me holding on. My roots prevent me from getting thin. My roots is where my life begins. My roots is my identity. My roots is what's keeping me. My roots are never dry. My roots is my reason why. My roots can never be washed away. My roots is always here to stay. My roots is not meant to be calm. My roots tell me I've found my home. My roots is where I belong. My roots identify what's wrong. My roots is my only weapon. And my roots keep me holding on. My roots keep me growing without me even knowing. My roots is what's in my heart. My roots ain't no poison dart. My roots let me say what I mean. And my roots let me mean what I say. My roots keep me growing strong. And I admire what it's showing. My roots give me strength. So I'm no longer bent. I said my roots give me strength, so I'm no longer bent. My roots give me strength, so I'm no longer bent. Bent, bent, bent. Ja, rest of our So Kibil Amlak, in, in terms of message, Kibil Amlak is an Amharic term which means glory to Ja. So that's really at the, the essence of, of what we bring when we play. Um, but in terms of giving glory to Ja, it's giving glory to Ja through the experience um, of uh, appreciating the, the divine qualities of music and rhythm and word sound via the sound system experience, which is the, the sharing experience. And that can bring about you know, different sort of meditative states, it can bring about like a real cathartic experience where you're really, you know, in, in, in that sort of intimacy of the sound system and, and sharing vibes, uh, it, it unconsciously is giving people the um, freedom of expression to, to, to really you know, free up themselves and in freeing up themselves and full joy in the, the music is, is, is in essence giving glory to Jack because he's a divine music, it's a divine concept. And, um, the ability to appreciate and experience as part of the human mind, the divine concept. So all of that really is the essence in giving glory to Jah through the sound system. Right? This is still, uh, this is still uh, you know, Rastafari is for the whole world. Yeah, not just for a set of people. It comes from a set, a set of people, but it's for the whole world. So uh, the message will. The message shall always be the same um, positive one, really. And uh, the message of Rastafari is about, uh, it's about the truth, truth about um, what the humankind is and what the, the world is about. Uh, so you can step away from the truth. If, if you're looking for a different experience, yeah. you know, if you're looking, you know, yeah, like a, for a different experience, like you're tired of the same thing, yeah. you know, Come to a dub dance. It's a good experience, experience a, a, a different message, you know. And um, you know, it's, it's it's educational, really, because of the message that it provokes. It's, you know, it's pure positive energy when you come, when you go in there. Like everyone is on the same level, and they're there for a very similar purpose. You know, the experience I have of, of that is that. Um, the, uh, the A side of the record is the, the message and um, it gives you something to think about and then the B side is the dub version which gives you some time for personally for me, kind of a meditation and to, to think about what the message was and then the operator can, can throw in his own sounds and create the right environment I just want to see if it was, that's the kind of the vibe you're trying to create and, yeah, well, all of these things is in, in terms of playing the vocal and then playing the dub. And maybe you're going to play the vocal, maybe you're going to play two vocals and two or three cuts of the dub. Um, 
any form of meditation always involves repetition. If you're meditating on breath or something like this, you're repeating the same thing. So to stick with that same rhythm track for maybe 20 minutes and you get some essence of the message that the vocalist is going to deliver on the first, on the A side or the first track, and then you get the chance to reflect and then you keep reflecting because you're, you're staying in this repetition and that all helps but also you know you've got the, the way often the dances are quite dimly lit so it's not it, it, it adds to that meditative vibe when Kabil Amlak play we always burn frankincense again to try and add to that meditative vibe the way that the sound the way that I personally try and engineer the sound is to have space because it's necessary to have not too much banging against your head if you want to be in a meditative vibe so a nice good clear high is a good solid bass and try and have space in between the frequency ranges Then you know, other sound system experience, you know, going to see other shanty at Carnival when you know when I was a teenager. That was great, you know, dropping the bass. <laughs> it, it, it's great, you know, and um, here in Bristol, a lot of the time I don't get to go to reggae dances as much as I'd like to because kind of I was in a DJ at house and techno events. But when I get a chance, I like to go to um, my friend DJ Strider's event, Teachers in Dub, and that's always that's always a great party. Or, you know, there's great little sessions kind of all over the place in Bristol. You know, there's always something going on. And, um, it's good music to go on. Yeah, it's good. And it's good kind of a good reggae session will uplift you much more so than any other style of music. Yeah. Yeah, positive, positive music. And Digi Steph and I saw a poster for Jam at the Malcolm X Centre. And um, while we were record shopping, and um, yeah, saw that poster and we were like, right, we've got to go. And going to that Shaka dance in 1993, we were both 15 years old, but we managed to get in. And um, yeah, it was uh, quite a moment really, seeing how Shaka uh, operated the sound system. We got there early, being young and naive, and Shaka hadn't even arrived. Shaka turned up late, and um, and we, we watched him set up the whole sound system, and even that alone was extremely... Uh, and we only actually got 45 minutes of music, because one of our mums came to pick us up. It was a bit embarrassing when the uh, dread came through, and uh, said, you your mum, so you have to go. But, best 45 minutes in a dance ever, for sure. One time I was when I, you know, when I really just started to appreciate, like, appreciate dubs and sound system was when um, I was w watching a video of Channel One sound system playing in Notting Hill Carnival in 2010, playing the last tune, and it was a Terratone production called Kiantanya. Kiantanya. And I remember, Mike, everyone, the vibes were just there. You could see it, you could see it, you could see it through the computer screen. It was just pure vibes, in it? Like a whole cloud of smoke, like another atmosphere above the crowd. And Mike would just pull up on that bass, and the whole place go like, you know, everyone's arms, arms coming up. And I thought, I'll see the, I can see Asher T from a distance just shacking up next to my next to the sound system. And like, boy, anyway. So it was 2012 Cardinal and Mike won the last tune and it was Cantania by Territory and boy, I must have scanned so hard I feel the muscle in both my legs, without a doubt, without a doubt, best session ever, but in the final channel 1, 2012, lost it.